Nothing compares to playing in the SEC. SEC is the best of the best. Oh my goodness! Did she safe? Opening weekend of conference play here in the SEC. And what a matchup we have, a top 25 affair between the Missouri Tigers and the Kentucky Wildcats. Welcome inside the broadcast booth. Max Toma alongside the former Mizzou Tiger great and Brooke Wilmis. And Brooke, you played at an elite level in this conference for a very long time. How much does the intensity ramp up for a day and a weekend just like this? There is nothing better than SEC home opening weekend. We're going to see two great teams today go at it, go after each other. They're both very similar in the way that they play. They have great pitchers, great starts to the lineup. Who's just going to come out with that win today? And for Kentucky, it all starts at the top of the order. Someone who's been doing it for a very long time for the Wildcats in Kayla Kowalik. Kayla Kowalik is the tone setter for these Kentucky Wildcats. She has come out every single year that she's been playing and had those high numbers that we see right now. Her program ranks in Kentucky history are first in a ton of categories. Is she going to come out today and be that Kayla Kowalik that we know, or is the Mizzou Tigers going to be able to shut her down? She's been doing it for a long, long time, and facing her in the circle for Mizzou is Lauren Kriggs. Lauren Kriggs has kind of emerged as Mizzou's ace this year. She's come out against those big games, been throwing that rise ball in the outer half of the plate, and she's able to jam it in on these hitters. She has actually developed a drop ball this year, so she's able to go up in the zone, go down in the zone, and she also has that amazing changeup that keeps those hitters off balance. And when we talked with Coach Anderson earlier in the week, she said Lauren Kriggs is just someone who Nowadays, this year, she just wants the softball and wants to be in the circle in the biggest moments. And this is certainly a big one here today. Yes, absolutely. Earlier in the year, she asked for the ball when they played number three Oklahoma State in, in Oklahoma. So you already know that she wants to come out, face these big teams. She wants to be the ace for this Missouri program. And today she's getting that reward with the start against Kentucky in the first SEC home series. Look at the numbers for the right-hander. Her eighth start this season, six at three with that two eight seven ERA. I velo pitcher out there coming off a very solid outing on Sunday. They got a nice bounce back victory at Tulsa after falling to Tulsa on Saturday night, and a big spot here for her. You see that her strikeout numbers are a little bit down this year. I believe that's happening because she's attacking the zone. She's attacking this, those hitters, making sure that the ball is being put into play with her excellent defense behind her. And that drop ball, like I said before, has been added to her arsenal. And she's been able to get those hitters out front of that drop ball and then blow it past them with that rise ball at 69 to 72. And she's facing a lineup with a couple of former All-Americans at the top, that two-headed monster between Kowalik and Aaron Koffel in the three-hole. Aaron Koffel is one of those elite shortstops in the entire nation. She's a top 50 player to watch this year. She comes in fifth in program history with 146 career RBIs. So you know she's going to come out, swing that hot bat for those Kentucky Wildcats. Koffel tied for sixth in the country with eight home runs already here in 2023. This is a matchup that's going to be a whole lot of fun. We talk about it, a top 25 matchup. And when they've been meeting up lately, it's tend to be going Mizzou's way. They met for one series last year on the road in Lexington, and it was a sweep for the Road Tigers. It always seems like when these two teams are playing, the, whole, the away team has had way more advantage than the home team. When Missouri came in last year, they swept Kentucky two run rule victories. The year before that, when Kentucky was here, Kentucky swept here at Mizzou Stadium. So who's going to come out this year? Who's going to have that edge and figure out how to overcome all the adversities that they're through? Yeah, Coach Larissa Anderson in her fifth year, 6-0, undefeated against Kentucky. And as you said, the last nine meetings between these two sides have been won by the road team. Back to back to back sweeps. You win the first day. You're feeling pretty good about the rest of the weekend. That first victory in series like this is probably the most important thing that you can have. It gives you that momentum going into day two and day three. If you can go up there and you can play a hard-fought Friday game, then you're going to feel confident going into the rest of the weekend. Kayla Kowala hitting 415, the grad student. Time for 37th in the country with 27 hits already this year, and she slaps one out towards short. Laird backhand fires it right on the money to get the out, and Kowala Comes up a little bit gimpy after falling to the grass. 
when you have a shortstop like Jenna Laird on the other side, her defensively is what is so good for the Missouri Tigers. 2022 Rawlings Gold Glove winner. You hit it right to her, anywhere near her, she always gobbles it up and throws it over the first base. That's something you mentioned before we got on air today. The strikeout number is a little bit down for Krings, but she has that great defense behind her so she can afford to let balls get put in play because you have the likes of a Jenna Laird over at short. Yeah, and that's one of Coach Anderson's philosophies is she loves a good defensive team. She teaches defense before she'll teach offense, before she will even teach base running, any of that. She believes defense is such an important factor, and defense wins championships. I really hope that Kowalik is okay after looking a little like she was walking gingerly into that first base Kentucky dugout. Vanessa Nesby. In the air, what a catch from Lauren Krings. Sliding on her knees, two up, two down. Might not have been the prettiest, but she gets the job done. Coach Anderson always talks about pitchers having to be able to play once they pitch that ball, and you see Lauren Krings jumping off the mound Number right four, there. Lauren, yep, Aaron wasn't the prettiest, but hey, she got that out. The reaction from her teammates and from Kara Daly right there, the third baseman. Two quick ones here. And this is a top of the order for Kentucky that is so tough. Eric Koffel steps in and takes a ball. One of the most prolific hitters in Kentucky softball program history. Getting 370 this year, mentioned the eight homers. She's got 22 RBIs as well. Also a career high. She's chasing in walks because she's right now on a pace for about a 50 walk season. Already at 16, career high is 24. There's a big cut, she just missed that one. Take a look at the Mizzou defense today. John Teach Phillips had a great day at the plate on Wednesday. She's in left. Alex Honnold back in the lineup out there in center. Has a plate since last Friday. Peyton Jackson in right. Daly Laird, Crenshaw, Frizzell left to right around the infield. And then another start for Megan Maul behind the plate. She looked really good offensively, especially on Wednesday. Coach Anderson has talked about that as well. Right now, she said it's a revolving door in the catching position. There's not one that's sticking out from the other. But Megan Maul had a great game on, on Wednesday when they played. UMKC and when she did she got two hits and she was very solid behind the plate so Coach Anderson gave, that, gave her another start today. The one two from Krings. It's low and inside. Koppel came up huge against Dayton in the home opener for Kentucky on Wednesday. Down two, two outs, two on in the bottom of the sixth inning delivered a three run shot. Ultimately bringing home the game winning run. Swing and a miss, strike three. Koppel goes through it, Kring sits down the side in order. Look at the lineup for the Mizzou Tigers and in that two spot, Alex Honnold. Remember she homered in the first inning against number three, OK State last Friday, but then was injured, did not play the rest of the weekend, did not play Wednesday, but back in the lineup and a huge bat in that two spot. She adds a whole nother dynamic when she's in the lineup and that two hole position batting 5'11 so far this year, that is unheard of numbers. She's coming in and she's doing exact, exactly what she needs to do in the two hole boat behind Jenna Laird. Tall task for them today, though, going against Stephanie Schoonover, the junior. What a amazing jump she has made from a sophomore to a junior year. 8-1, and 1-6-2 one, one, ERA. She's one strikeout away from becoming the seventh pitcher this year already to eclipse 100 strikeouts. She's going to hit both parts of the zone with that rise and that screw combo. She's going to have that curve that's going to come across the plate as well, and that's what it Coach Lawson talked about is she's doing a really good job at mixing it up, not leaving it down the middle of the zone and keeping hitters off balance. Strike out the walk ratio of just about five to one. And two quick strikes here on Jenna Laird. I mean, Schoonover has just been unbelievable this year. She's only allowed one home run. She's allowed 15 runs this year. Almost half, seven of those came against Oklahoma. You take away that outing, and she's just been absolutely dominant against everybody else here. Really. And she's she's doing exactly what she did right there. She just got her 100th strikeout against a team that does not strike out very much. So she's going to come up, attack these Mizzou hitters, keep them off balance, get really ahead in the count, and she's going to do exactly what she does right there. And look at the jump she has made. She's already eclipsed last year's win total for her when she had seven. The ERA, I mean, that looks like it's almost about a third. The shutout's time for the most 
in D1 with six. She's got that no-no where she broke the Kentucky record with 16 strikeouts. Coach Lawson talked about Schoonover's change from last year to this year, and she really attributed it to the weight room. She was in there. She was committed. She was making sure she was get, getting bigger, faster, stronger. She had a jump in her velo as well. She came in throwing low 60s, and now she's throwing upper 60s. It's amazing just the transformation that she's had so far in just the few years that she's been at Kentucky. I undersold her. It was 18 strikeouts. New program record with that no-hitter against a very good North Texas team. And she struck out Jenna Laird, who had only been punched out twice all year long. That's already a huge out for Schoonover as she's coming in. Jenna Laird is such a lethal leadoff hitter. She gets on base in ways that even sometimes she can't even understand. So the fact that she came in, attacked her right away, she was ahead in the count from the beginning, and that's how she was able to get her out. And what a great matchup this is between her and Honold, because Honold is also having an incredible year so far at the plate. You do start to question, though, did that week off take a toll on Alexis Honnold? On Alexis Honnold, exactly what she's been doing so far in the year. Is she going to have a lull coming back, or is she going to be able to get right back into it where she was and still be able to hit as, as hard and as far as she has been? That average at 5'11", 11th in the country, her on pace percentage third in the nation. She's slugging over 1,000. Her slugging is seventh in the country. I mean, she has flat out been one of the best offensively of anybody in the nation. Ahead in the count here, 3-1. And fouls it away to the left side. Count runs full. When looking at Alex Honnold, though, she doesn't have the biggest build. She is a little bit taller, but she's not the strongest. She's not going to overpower you with anything, but she finds ways to get on base. She's such a crafty hitter, and she's so unique with her swing. You will never see a lot of people do it, but she just looks so relaxed every time she's up at the plate. And she doesn't swing super hard, but it finds ways somehow. On the ground, up the middle. Here's Koffel and two quick ones. Kentucky's defensive look here today. Nesby out there in left field made a tremendous catch earlier this week, featured on SC's top 10 plays earlier this season. Blanton in center, Smith in right, Lorsung at third, Koppel just made that play at short, Tobias at second, Harrison at first, and Kayla Kowalik, the always steady presence behind the play. She's had some of the most starts in Kentucky history being that catcher back there. And catching is not an easy position. You're squatting for two, three hours within a day. So the fact that she's been able to do it so long at such an elite level is so impressive to see. Julia Kretschow hitting 379. She was two for five with an RBI and a run scored on Wednesday. Riding a five game hitting streak, three multi-hit games over that stretch. Three-quarter swing, and it's a 1-1 one, one count. And Brooke, you got to see Schoonover pitch against you guys last year. What's changed in her game in your mind? We talked about the weight room. That's been a big emphasis for Coach Lawson with her. But what do you see different in her presence on the mound? I see the confidence right now. I see it in her shoulders, the way that she's coming up. And she has command over every single batter that she's had so far in this game. Even looking at past games, she just she just exuberates confidence. And it, I don't know what it is compared to last year, but this year she's stepping up to the mound. She's getting that pitch. She's ready to go. And she's attacking the hitters every single time. Got her 100th strikeout to start the game. Kane Jenna Laird. And almost got her second here in the first inning. <laughs> Coach Lawson in her 16th season at Kentucky. Boy, what a turnaround she has had with this Kentucky program. Their staff has meshed together, and they have been together for a long, long time. It's been a terrific program for a while. She is the elite program leader for this Kentucky team. She has turned it around from where they were in the past, and she has done absolutely nothing but great things for this Kentucky team. And she has found a way to just lead them into different directions that they had never seen before until she got here. Nobody on two out first inning. Schoonovers want two. Just off the outside corner, good spot. Here's a look at Coach Larissa Anderson, her fifth year at the helm with this Mizzou program. We talked about the success she's had on the road at Kentucky where she's 6-0. Had a great run of it here. You know Larissa Anderson awfully well. I do. She has had such an impact on my life, but she has an impact on every single player that she sees. And she's going to come out here and get her team ready to compete. 
Schoonover gets two Ks, scoreless, on to the second. A six up, six down first inning for both pitchers. As Lord Kring's back out for the second, middle third, Riley Smith, Hallie Mitchell, and Grace Lorsa coming up here for the Kentucky Wildcats. Quick first, I think on paper, expectations entering this Friday night duel. Are we thinking this is going to be a lower scoring game? It's also another cold one here in Como. We should talk about it. It's about 44 degrees. A little cooler maybe even than Wednesday. But I think both of these teams are so used to it. Missouri being here, it's not the warmest in the Midwest. It obviously has its ups and downs, but we see that they've been playing in this. They know this. And then Kentucky coming out on the other side, Coach Lawson talked about how they haven't played a warm game yet all year long. They played in Texas. That She said it was freezing. Played in Palm Springs. Wasn't the best there for the Mary Nutter. So they have been playing in cold weather all year long, so they are almost used to it. Yeah, both these teams are very accustomed to the cool temps. Coach Lawson and maybe one of the quotes of the week when we were talking to her, saying this time of year, you know, Como can make Lexington look like the Bahamas. And I'm not going to say I disagree with her. Even though I'm, I'm from here, I'm from Mizzou, it does get cold, and it is sometimes awful to play in this weather. Lexington, for the most part, has always been pretty nice when I've played out there. Kring spears that out of the air, gets the easy out as first as Riley Smith is retired. Good job fielding her position so far, four batters in. Absolutely, and Coach Anderson talks about it all the time. She wants pitchers that can field balls, and you see Lauren Krings ready for everything that's coming her way, making sure it's easier not only on herself, but on her defense, too. Allie Mitchell, the sophomore, hitting 375. This is her 14th appearance of the year, but this is her very first start. Three for eight so far here at 2023 at the dish. That takes a first pitch strike. Sophomore from Forsyth, Illinois. And this is the part of the lineup where Coach Lawson was kind of emphasizing, hey, we know who's going to produce at the top, but that middle part of the order, we're still trying to work things through here, still early in the season. Absolutely, and I think both of these teams are trying to figure out their identity with four through nine right now. They're trying to see who's going to step up, who's going to be that leader to make sure that they get base hits so then they can turn it back over to the top of the lineup. I don't think either coach has figured that out yet, and that's why both of their lineups have been different. Almost every single game there's been new girls in, new girls out, and there's only been a couple that have have been extremely consistent in these lineups the whole year. Brings goes in on the hands and then goes away, but misses the corner to Hallie Mitchell. And that's going to be some been to really watch really all weekend long. You know the top third of the lineups really for both sides are going to produce, but who's going to produce towards the bottom? It's going to be a question mark all weekend long. It's going to be who's going to be able to get those extra runs at the bottom of the lineup. And I believe that team that does that is going to score more runs. Second punch out for Lauren Krings as Maul throws it down to Frizzell at first. And a great start here for Mizzou and Lauren Krings in the circle. You see Lauren Krings coming back here with a change up down in the dirt. And she was able to do that because she got ahead in the count. And then we have Megan Mull who blocked it up back there, ended up getting the out at first base. Grace Lorsung, the third base, but 217 hitter so far this year. Two outs, nobody on base here in the second. Swings right through the first offering. You can just hear the pop of both pitchers right now. It is, I can even hear it all the way up from the booth. I don't know if it's the way the catchers are catching it, but they are bringing the gas today, bringing the heat. We just saw Lauren Kring's last one, 71 miles an hour, 71 miles an hour, and then Schoon over, over there throwing 68 to 79. And then next thing you know, it's just, it's going so fast right now. Two pitchers who have cranked up the velo. Lorsung at the plate, an Indiana transfer. 0 for 3 with a strikeout on Wednesday. Just 3 for her last 18, but did homer against UIC on Sunday in that commanding 11-0 win for Kentucky. That's it well down the left field line, but curving and foul on a play. Go Harrison on deck. Five up, five down so far for Krings. 
Sierra Harrison had a great first handful of innings in her start for the freshman on Wednesday here at Mizzou Softball Stadium. She sat down the first 12 that day. One, two. Strike three, looking. Back-to-back K's kill off Kentucky's second inning, and Lauren Krings is on fire right now here through two innings. Lauren Krings bringing it in on the hands, and she's able to get these Kentucky hitters out and keep them off balance. Welcome to SEC softball opening weekend on the SEC Network. Always a terrific time of year. Love the dino race here. Who's going to like this one out? Well, we'll always hang in suspense. I didn't catch the ending live. I didn't either. I thought they were actually going to keep it on camera and be able for us to see the whole thing. But what a great time of year it is. Here's the finish. Photo finish. Give it to Green. But wow. Slim as the margins over there in the left field corner. I think Green reached out with her, with her snout a little bit longer than Blue. So she got that victory in my books. By a nose. It's side ball one. Kara Daly, the third baseman, to lead things off here for Mizzou in the second. But great time of year. Champ week on the hardwood. College baseball, college softball on the diamond. Kicking it into full gear here with conference play. You got to love the middle of March. Absolutely. And I'm a huge fan of NCAA basketball. And the fact that it's already coming up this quickly, it's been amazing. But again, the softball season starts. Does it get any better than that? And it's great to see all those non-con matchups, you know, all over the country and very warm destinations. But I think, like we talked about in the open, just the intensity level that kicks up, especially in the SEC, come a weekend just like this. In, in my opinion, the SEC is the strongest overall conference that there is in the nation. You're going to go in every single weekend and basically face a top 25 team or a team that is right outside the top 25. So these teams starting off with each other, it's such a great matchup to see. And they're only going to see better competition when they keep going on. And both these teams have faced a whole lot of tough opponents already throughout the year. Kentucky went, they had to play an Oklahoma team twice. I mean, was it a little eye-opening to see Coach and hear Coach Lawson talk about that OU Sooner side and just how much better she thinks they are than anybody else in the country? She said they're playing just on almost a different planet. Absolutely, and she even admitted herself that her team went up there and they played small, they played timid. They got to... They didn't compete from the beginning, and that's why Oklahoma was able to jump on top of them. Here's this weekend's featured SEC softball game right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Tomorrow we have five games starting at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, but we're highlighting Mississippi State hosting number one Oklahoma, those same Sooners at four Eastern, three Central, and in the second game of their two-game series in Starkville. It should be a great day of softball on the diamond. On it back. To the pitcher, they get the out at first. Job done for Shantice Phillips as Kara Daly moves up to second. And you almost feel like it's going to be one of those games. If you get a runner on first base, no outs, you have to find a way to move her over to second base. That's exactly what Coach Anderson did right there. She wanted to get that runner into scoring position because now just a little single can score that run, get that first run up on the board. Now Riley Frizzell gets a chance with a base hit, maybe to put Mizzou on the board first. First baseman hitting 254 so far this year. And takes downstairs. Now we talked about this small ball offense on Wednesday. Top two in the SEC at Zach Bunce. Just had one right there. A whole lot of stolen bases, especially those top two in the order in Holland and Laird, and they get a ton of free passes. And this is a different Mizzou team from what we're seeing last year. Last year was all about the long ball. How many people can you get on base so you can hit it out and get those runners in? But now this year, it's a whole new identity. And I believe that comes from their new hitting coach, Coach Cottrell, who came over from Oklahoma State. He has a new philosophy for these hitters. He has something different that is unique to each player. And that, what I believe, has has made them successful this year is because now they're doing the small ball piece of it, which they didn't do in the last couple of years. Yeah, I love that mentality. It's not just a cookie cutter kind of thing where it's just one size fits all for everybody. It's different for every player and maybe personified the best with the top of the order in Jenna Laird, who's kind of gone from a hitter who hits in the low 300s, has a few home runs, but now she can hit 400 and just go out there, barely ever strike out. We saw just the third of the year, but she's almost an entirely new hitter come this season. Coach Anderson couldn't say anything more positive 
about Coach Cottrell. He has so much experience under his belt. He's been to three College World Series. He's super individualized for all of the hitters, and that's what she believes makes him such a great coach and great for this program. Strike three, swing, and what a big strikeout that is. The third of the night already for Schoonover. Schoonover again working that outside portion of the plate. She was working Riley the whole time inside that at bat, and the next thing you know, she goes outside with a 68 mile an hour curveball. And she keeps that, she keeps Riley off balance, and that is what really made her successful during that at bat. Now it's up to Peyton Jackson with two outs, and she takes low and outside. Jackson had a great day towards the bottom of the order on Wednesday, two for two, and RBI scored a couple, and that triple down the right field line also stole a base, walked and was hit by a pitch. She reached in all four of her plate appearances. She's a transfer from Texas Tech who had a ton of success when she was there. But now she's come here, she's found herself in a little bit of a rut to start the season. But have you seen recently, she's starting to get her footing again. She's starting to have those good approaches at the plate. As you can see right here, when she was at Texas Tech, she had a 336 batting average with a ton of extra base hits. But now coming over to Mizzou, started off a little bit slow, but has gotten way better as the season's gotten, gone on. Started the year 0 for 12, but she's 6 for 12 since. Pops that one up, foul and out of play. And that streak started the solid one to play on February 25th, that game versus Long Beach State. And since then, she's really started to kind of find her own. And can she continue that momentum is a big question into SEC play. She has, and Coach Anderson has been putting a ton of different outfielders out there right now. Peyton Jackson being one of them, but she is starting to solidify that right field spot because she's being consistent. She can't have those up and down lulls, which that's what Pe that's what take, takes people out of the lineup. But Peyton has done a very good job at finding ways to get on base, being that crafty lefty. And right now she has the opportunity to score that run from second base. Deuce is wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. And the count goes full. And we've talked about the missing pieces for Mizzou, the shoes they're having to fill from last year, including in the outfield, losing someone just like yourself at center. Yes, but we've seen Alex Honnold has been absolutely crazy this year. She's been able to take, take over that center field spot and be that leader that the Mizzou Tigers need. The payoff pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. Another 2K inning for Schoonover. Four Ks through two. We remain scoreless after two innings here in Columbia. Stephanie Schoonover, how about it? She climbs the ladder on this pitch, and she gets Peyton Jackson to swing at something that would have been a walk. Take a look at the live scoreboard. Florida all over Mercer right now. And, well, no hits in the third inning in our other SEC matchup right now. Number five, Tennessee hosting Ole Miss, which means we got two games going on, both in the third inning. But we haven't had an SEC conference hit yet. We have not, but this is what's so great about the SEC is the pitching has increased tremendously over the past couple years. We see it with Tennessee with Ashley Rogers. Ole Miss has brought in two or three transfer pitchers that have been dominant for them, and we see it in this game with Lauren Krings. And it makes it so exciting because it feels like you're at your edge of your seat for almost every out. It feels like it's basically the postseason because let's face it, whoever pushes across the first run in this game here, it's going to feel very good about their chances with who they have in the circle, respectively. You can almost feel that both of these teams are just a little bit too tight right now. It is the beginning of the SEC softball season. They want to get that first win underneath their belts. But both of these hitters, they're going up there and they're letting the pitcher dominate them. And kudos to the pitchers for coming out ready to pitch and getting ahead of all of these batters. Nico Harris in the first baseman to lead things off here in the third. Taylor Evans, excuse me, pitch hitting as that's fouled away off the top of the screen. Taylor Rems was one for two on Wednesday. Put an end to a 0 for 10 stretch for her at the dish. Six for 23 so far this year. The sophomore for Kaiser, Oregon. And laces that one through the right side. First base hit of the night for either side. Looks like our game got the first base hit of the SEC home opening series.
You see Krings just left that a little bit too much over the plate. She was ahead in the count, but when that happens and it leaks over the plate a little bit, these, these Kentucky hitters are going to attack it every single time that they're up there. So, Ebbs is aboard. And Jenna Blanton will now step into the box. Richard Freshman from Chapel Hill, Tennessee. 286 hitter so far this year. As the small ball approach continue, it does. That's fun and fun. Like I said before, these two teams, when they get a runner on first base to start the inning, they have to find a way to move them over. And both of these coaches have elected to try and sacrifice that runner over to second base. I think you would expect that, especially at this point in the lineup. You got Blanton hitting in the eighth spot. And in the hole, awaiting, trying to get an at-bat here, maybe in a clutch moment. You're trying to get Kayla Kowalik up this frame. Absolutely, but you see our the nine hitter, Margaret Tobias, who is on deck right now. She has a 386 batting average. She's having a, a phenomenal year as well. So as an eight hole hitter, you got to find a way to move that runner over to second base so you can get the girls who have had maybe a few more base hits this year up to get those to get those runs across. And Margaret Tobias was described by Coach Lawson as just a spark plug since she's kind of taken a hold of that nine spot. And she has. She's been all over the lineup. She's been in the two hole sometimes, but Coach Lawson just feels like she is better in that nine hole so she can turn the lineup back over to Kowalik and Koffel. Successful bunt. Daly gets the out at first, but Ems moves up to second. Krista nope. Hamilton is a freshman that comes in that Coach Lawson has talked about her being elite. She is going to be a very bright spot in the future for Kentucky. She just hasn't gotten a ton of reps this year because she is behind All-American Kayla Kowalik in that catcher position. But Coach Lawson has talked about she wants to be able to get her more production at the plate and get her more opportunities. I said she's a great catcher, but when you have a five-year elite catcher, one of the best players in program history. It's tough to get her at bats. She's had 40 this year, seven for 40, a 175 hitter. And an incredible start. The first game of her college career against Louisville hit a walk-off three-run homer. How about that to start? And a program. Two quick strikes for Krings. Her first game, she was two for three, a homer, a double, four RBIs. In the battle of the Bluegrass game, to an arrival re-affair with that walk-off homer. Absolutely, and she didn't act like a freshman in that game. She came out and she attacked just exactly like what every single coach wants. Getting these experience in these SEC games as well is only going to make her grow and be a better player when she does grow. Got under it, sprayed it foul, but out of play. Remains nothing in two. First adversity today that Lauren Krings and this Mizzou defense are facing. Absolutely, but she's starting to bear down. She start 0-2 in this count, which is extremely important to a batter who wants to beat, who's up there as a pinch hitter trying to get that base hit for the team. But now she can do almost anything she wants because she is ahead in the count. Went upstairs, that was fouled away as Carissa Hamilton continues to fight. And how tough is it in these shoes right now? You're in an 0-2 hole against a veteran inside the circle. You know you're probably getting strikes this at bat because of who is on deck, but Top spot right here for a young player. Absolutely, but this is only going to show what type of player she's going to be. Is she going to give in or is she going to attack with these two strikes and try and foul everything off until she gets a good pitch that she can put in play, just like the one that we saw right there. Fouled one to the right, fouled one straight back, now fouls it to the left. Kring's working all over the zone, and Hamilton's staying with her every step of the way. Still 0-2. But something that you don't know is the fact that she's able to foul it off to the left side, the right side, straight back. It means she's seeing all of these different types of pitches on the different parts of the zone, but she's hitting it where it's pitched. She's just a little late with it, but once she gets on plane and on time with it, it with a pitch that maybe Kringsley's over the, t over the middle of the plate, she's going to drive it. Keen eye. It's the first ball of the A-B. And this is one of the top players in the recruiting class last year in the country. Number 22 overall. Her extra inning softball, number seven catcher in the class. Her senior year in high school, she hit 604 with 22 homers. Absurd numbers. You don't hear about that very often. Krings finds the inside corner this time, and Hamilton goes down looking. 
You saw the pitch before that. Cranes worked inside, didn't get the call, but she goes right back to it for this one. This time, maybe just an inch inside, in towards the plate a little bit more and gets the call this time. Back to the top of the order at Kayla Kowalk. We saw her kind of stumble over first base when she made that out to start the game. Stayed in there behind the plate and now rips one right back up the middle. Ebbs around third, the throw to the plate, not in time, and Kentucky strikes first. Who else would you expect to get that base hit besides Kayla Kowalik? She is the leader of this team. She's up there attacking. Krings leaves one a little bit too much over the plate, and Kowalik makes her pay. Waste no time. Right down the heart of the plate and just shoots it right back where it came. That's the type of hitter that Co Kayla Kowalik is. Coach Lawson talked it, about it all the time. The one thing that she lives by is she will not get out the same way two times. First at bat, she decided to slap, got out that way. This time she decided to hit. Because of that, she was able to get that base hit up the middle to score the run. Pitch gets away from Maul, sends Kowalik all the way up to third. And Kayla said that that's an approach that she gets from her mom. Never get out the same way twice, and that makes her so difficult because she's so unpredictable at the play. You just never know what she's going to do. A triple threat, always keeping you on your toes. And that's one thing. When you're a triple threat in the game of softball, it keeps the defense on these toes. You can't always be up on her because she's not going to slap every time. You can't be too far back or she's going to drop a bunt right in front of you. It's so hard to play defense against a hitter like Kayla Kowalik because she can do all types of things, and you are never going to know what is going to come next. When we talk about the moving pieces outside of Kowalik in the leadoff spot, Koffel third. Well, Vanessa Nesby, who's at the plate right now, chance to double up the lead here in the third inning, has really kind of forced the hand of Coach Lawson to putting her in the lineup each day. She's kind of supplanted herself in that two spot. Entered today leading the team with a 4.59 average. Tons of speed. Megan Mall looking in. Back-to-back -back starts behind the plate for her. And just got a piece, 2-2. Two -two. Big shoes to fill behind the plate, no matter who is back there for Mizzou. Both of these girls have gotten a ton of opportunities this year. Again, Coach Anderson talked about the catching position kind of being a revolving door right now. It's which player can step up more offensively. She hasn't quite found that yet. She's trying to figure out the right combinations with catchers and pitchers. But Megan Moe had a great game last game, but now she got the start for this game as well. Krings gets the out to end the inning. But Kayla Kowala gives Kentucky the lead. Whatever it is, whatever it takes, do not be afraid to be great. Got to love it. Mike Tup Mondays are back. And we have our first two coaches' interviews coming up here in the fourth inning. We'll talk to Coach Lawson from Kentucky in the top half of the inning and then Coach Anderson from Mizzou in the bottom of the fourth. Get their thoughts just about halfway through this first game of the conference slate. First pitch strike to Megan Mall. Both of these coaches as well are very knowledgeable about the game. So whatever questions that are, that are going to come up, no matter what we do, they're going to have great answers to it. They are some of the most knowledgeable. They're on the NFCA. They have all this experience. So I'm very excited to get to get to talking to them. Ball pops it up, but Kowalik watches it. About six rows into the crowd, and it's 0-2 on the Mizzou catcher. Making her 12th start of the season, 250 hitters so far. It's driven in three. Stephanie scooting over with a great first couple of innings, and now her team is stinked her to a one run advantage. Ball, then Snyder, then back to the top of the order in general air. 
you would love so much if you were the Missouri Tigers to get one of these base, one of these hitters on base, whether it's Megan Mall or Maddie Snyder, to turn it over to the top half of your lineup so they can hopefully produce as well too. Three straight strikeouts, now five on the night for Schoonover. Schoonover goes back upstairs with that last strikeout. She did it the pitch before. This time she decided to stay a little bit lower, throw that low rise instead of a rise that just jumps out of your hand. It just hops right over Megan Mall's bat. Now the ninth spot in Maddie Snyder. And, you know, Coach Lawson talked about the adjustment that Schoonover had to make, you know, from club softball to, at the collegiate level. They did appeal the swing, no swing. So it's 1-0. But instead of working up and out of the zone, getting a whole lot of players to chase, now working through the zone instead and how important that's been to her development here. Yeah, when she was in travel ball, she was able to get those swings and misses all the time. She didn't have to throw strikes all the time. So when that happened, she could throw whatever she wanted. It didn't even have to be consistent. But now that she's playing in college, the hitters are smarter. They know what pitch they're attacking. And if she throws too many balls, she's going to get way too tired. Coach Lawson talked about she needs to throw through the zone. If she has some misses over the middle of the plate, that's going to happen. But you can't have an excuse for having it go up in the zone and throwing way too many balls. Great pitch there, 2-0 to get back in the count. And you see right there, that was a 2-0 changeup. That is how much confidence she has in that pitch. You don't see that very often, especially when hitters are ahead in the count. You throw that 2-0 changeup, you could throw it, and there's three balls right there. Right back battling to even a 2-2. Two two. Felt like she hadn't fallen behind a hitter all night long until the nine spot, Maddie Snyder who got ahead 2-0. The only other batter that she did get behind was Kara Daly. Kara Daly was very patient waiting for that right pitch, and she ended up getting a walk out of it as well. Strong hands behind the plate of Kayla Kowalik, too, trying to frame that. Steal a strike on the outside corner. Full count, one out here in the third. The zoo dugout trying to get into it, trying to spark a rally with the top of the order on deck. Pay off to Snyder. Jam strength back and out of play. Great at bat so far for Maddie Snyder. She's fouling pitches off. She's seeing a lot of pitches as well. And as the nine hole hitter, you are going to have a lot of people in front of you that has been able to give good information. And she's gotten that information. It's so far done very well. Strikeout number six, the first time through the order for Stephanie Schoonover. Schoonover again goes a little bit higher up in the zone. The Mizzou hitter wasn't quite ready for it. She throw that, throws that low rise at a different plane than what her normal rise would be, and it just jumps a little bit right over the hitter's bat. We got a great matchup this weekend, three games with Couple of great shortstops. Two players who really play the game a different way, but both at a very elite level. And not just good shortstops, great shortstops. They are both top 50 players to watch in the country, and they are so good at the things that they do. You see Erin Koffel on the left. She obviously hits for more power. She gets more RBI. She's in that three-hole position. And with Jenna Laird up, she is that crafty lefty who gets on base. She hits little bloopers. She gets singles. She reaches on base, and she steals so many bases. You see right there, she is 18 for 18 this year on stolen bases. They are two completely different hitters, but they are such great hitters in their own respect. I think the biggest surprise on there is that Laird actually has one more RBI than Koffel at this point of the year. And she, Laird's the leadoff hitter. That is unheard of to have that many RBIs because your job is just to get on base. But the fact that she's up there and she has one more than one of the most powerful shortstops in the nation, it's quite impressive. So first time through the order, six Ks for Schoonover. Only two balls put in play for Mizzou. Honnold grounded out to short, and then they had the sack bunt from Shantice Phillips, but Jenna Laird, who draws, walks with the best of them aboard here with two outs. And she does. Jenna Laird is so patient at the plate. She doesn't chase anything out of the zone. And that has come from the new perspective that jo Jeff Cottrell has given to the players this year. He got her foot down earlier in, the, in her batting stance, which then kept her eyes more level. Since it's been more level, her 
of walks have increased, her strikeouts have decreased, and she's been able to find ways to get on base, which all comes from the new hitting coach, Jeff Cottrell. 12 walks to just three strikeouts this year for Jenna Laird. Always a threat to go steal a base as that's pumped the other way. Foul. So Laird has 18 stolen bases entering today. She was actually caught for the first time all year on Wednesday, but 18 stolen bases. That's tied for sixth most in the country. Absolutely, but then you have an elite catcher behind the plate like Kayla Kowalik. This is what I love to see, that cat and mouse game between the runner on first base and the catcher behind home plate. Who's going to win? Is Jen Laird going to steal the base to get into scoring position for Alex Honnold, or is it going to be Kayla Kowalik that is going to make her maybe a little bit more timid, maybe not steal those bases because she is such an elite catcher? Leads the SEC with those 18 swipe backs. So you got... An elite base runner at first. You got an elite pitcher in the circle this year, and you got one of the best bats at the plate right now in the country. Terrific matchup here to finish off the third with two outs as Honold stays alive. You saw Jenna Laird taking off on that pitch. Don't know if she saw something from Schoonover or if she thought she was going to get that back, but I love that smart call by Coach Anderson because if she does get out at second base, you still have your hottest hitter up at the plate to start the next inning. Schoonover punches out the side. She gets strikeouts number five, six, and seven tonight, and she just continues to groove here in Coma. Schoonover does the exact same thing she did on the other hitters, went up with that pitch, up again, and to get the last strikeout, went up a little higher. An NIL deal if I bring her over here. Kentucky leading Missouri 1-0 as we start the fourth inning here in the SEC Conference opener. And pleasure to be joined by Kentucky head coach Rachel Lawson. And Rachel, first off, got to ask you, what have you seen from how just great Stephanie has been so far tonight? Well, she's doing a great job mixing her pitches. She's, you know, changing speed. She's changing heights, you know, sides of the plate. She, she really looks like she has good command tonight. Coach Lawson, you have your leader in Kayla Kowalik coming up with that huge RBI single to get that run across. What has she meant to your team this, not only this year, but her whole career? Oh, she means everything, right? Our, our offense kind of starts with her. I mean, not just because she's a leadoff batter, but even later in games and stuff. She's just so fiery, so strong, such a passion for the game. I mean, she, she means the world to us. How about that at bat for Taylor Ebbs, too, to start last inning? Yeah, you know, Taylor's such a winner. It's just nice to see her be able to go up there in a leadoff position and start us off. So really, really uh, proud of her for doing that. Coach, thanks so much for taking the time. Good luck tonight and the rest of the weekend. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. Always great to chat with Coach Lawson, someone who's just been doing it at a very, very high level in the best conference in the country for an awfully long time. Absolutely, she has. And again, like we said before, she has turned this Kentucky program around. Before her, they didn't have very many conference appearances. They didn't have very many national championships appearances. As you're seeing before, they have 123 top pot top 25 wins since she has been here 62 all sec players and that is just the little thing that coach lawson does for this team that's one of the crazier graphics you're going to see all season long i mean that is just simply incredible and this stat really all together we talk about how well they've meshed together well from top to bottom they've just all been there for so long they know exactly what to expect from basically everybody on this staff the longest tenured staff of any sports program at Kentucky right now. And you know how easy that is when you're recruiting players like, hey, yep, I got my assistant coaches. They've been here for 13, 14 years with me. We're going to stay together for the longest time. You don't have to worry about the constant coaching changes that happen every single year, especially at this at the D1 program. You find coaches that move from one school to another, but instead these ladies have decided to stay together and they have made this program so much better because of it. In the last 13 years you've looked, you've seen Rachel Lawson, in the dugout, you've seen Christine Himes at third. You've seen Molly Belcher at first. I mean, it's just been a staple year in and year out. You know what you're getting from Kentucky. You have. And again, these girls love playing underneath them. They have such a great knowledge of the game, and they love being there every single day. And that's why I think she Coach Lawson gets so many good recruits that come to her just because of the family atmosphere that they bring to each player that they bring in. Heads up with a Kentucky dugout. One, two was just slapped the other way from Koffel. That was coming in hot off the bat right into the visiting dugout. 
when you have a fast pitcher like Lauren Krings, whenever something comes in that hard, it goes out even faster. Good thing all of the Kentucky players were able to get out of the way. When you're on the on-deck hitter, you're certainly keeping your head on a swivel after a swing like that. You see Riley Smith backing up because of that. I mean, I would too with something coming that hard off of Aaron Koffel's bat. What two bounces in front of the play. 3-4-5, Koppel, Smith, and Mitchell do up here. They're saying, oh, yeah, it missed me by this much. And, you know, as that story grows day to day, week to week, it's going to be a closer and closer margin. Oh, I just barely missed it. Absolutely. I, I dodged it, got completely out of the way of it, when in reality it was probably three feet away from them. That's crushed. Deep out towards center, a no-doubter. Eric Koffel's 55th career home run, her ninth this year. Erin Koffel does not miss on this pitch whatsoever. She has so much raw strength in her swing. She's not the biggest player, again, but she finds ways to get down in her legs, gets this pitch over the middle of the plate, and absolutely crushes it out to center field. 45th career homer, not 55th, but man, this was gone as soon as she made contact. She didn't even sprint out of the box. That's how much she knew that it was over. She, that's the best feeling in the world. You hit it so hard that you just know that it's going to go over the fence. On a cold day on the road out to dead center. Got all of it. 2 nothing Kentucky. That's chopped up the first baseline. Krings has it and gets the first down. 147 career RBIs for Eric Koffelbaum. That's fifth in Kentucky program history. And she's only a junior. She has another year and a half to go out and break that RBI record. When you have big sluggers like Abby Cheek, who played at Kentucky, and she has so many home runs, so many RBIs, to be even be in that contention of talking, it's unbelievable to see a modern-day player going through that. In a game you knew was going to be low scoring, and there was no score. Barely a base runner through the first couple of innings. We didn't have a hit through two innings in this contest. Kentucky gets the lead with one run in the third and doubles it with an Eric Koffel homer. This is the communication piece that is so important when you are hitters, is going out and telling the rest of your lineup exactly what you're seeing. And when you do, you're able to get smoked balls like the one we're seeing right now and the Aaron Koffel home run. Allie Mitchell goes the other way, just past Kara Daly, down the left field line for a one-out double. These Kentucky hitters are starting to figure out Lauren Krings a little bit more. Her ball's not jumping as much as it did in the first two innings. That ball was a little bit flatter over the plate on the outside corner. Hallie Mitchell does such a great job at driving it the other way, keeping her bat path nice and level with the ball. Grace Lorsung now at the dish. Struck out looking her first and long time up against Lauren Krings tonight. Off the end of the back to Daly at third. They get the out there, go back for the double play, but the throw is too late. Good base running there for Mitchell. Some things that we don't see in that play, Jenna Laird does such a great job at making sure that she goes and gets the ball and it doesn't get past her. You might not have seen this on TV, but there wasn't any close backup. If that would have gotten past her, that could have scored another run. So, yes, that is an extremely smart play to come off the bag, make sure that you catch that ball instead of trying to get the out when there was no play. Wave and a miss from Taylor Epps. Brooke, here's exactly what you were just talking about. Absolutely, and they made sure get the out at first. Riley Frizzell's throw is a little bit offline, but Jenna Laird makes sure that she's keeping her feet moving. She's going out and getting that ball because, again, if that would have gotten past her, it, then we would have had another run score, and a 3-0 lead is a lot different than a 2-0 lead. And we've been talking about, you know, especially on Wednesday, just the little things, all those small things that Mizzou does right, and that's a little thing right there that just kind of keeps the game at just two runs. So. Absolutely. Co Coach Anderson's defensive philosophy is one of the best in the nation. She has a whole segment about how you do 
the correct proper correct and proper catching and throwing. She talks about how if you cannot catch and throw in this game, you cannot be in the lineup. And that is why you'll see such great defense behind these Missouri hitters and these Missouri pitchers as well because they go out and they do all the fundamentals correct. Coming up, we'll talk live with Coach Larissa Anderson. Bottom of the fourth inning here in Columbia, Kentucky, leading Missouri by a score of two to nothing. Great to be joined here by Coach Larissa Anderson. Coach, what kind of adjustments do you guys need to make with Stephanie Schoonover in the circle right now? I mean, she's throwing extremely well, and she's living at the top of the zone, and we're expanding it. Um, we're, we're chasing that rise ball that's up at the top, and we get a zone down a little bit more. You started Lauren Krings in the circle today, which we talked earlier. She wants the ball right now. She wants to be that go-to pitcher for the Missouri team. What has she done so well so far? Yes, she's given up a couple hits, but besides that, what have you seen from her? I mean, she's keeping them off balance with that changeup. That's what she needs to continue to do, um, but keep the changeup down in the zone where she can get those swings and misses, which then sets up a lot of her other stuff. Um, she's getting some key strikeouts, and, and they're not hitting too much in play other than they capitalize that last inning. Um, we just have to be able to manufacture some more runs so we don't put as much pressure on her. Coach, you're a perfect 6-0 and against Kentucky. What do you have to do to oh. keep that undefeated record to come back here tonight? Oh, I'd like to get a hit here. I mean, that would be a start <laughs> and maybe get some runs across the home plate. That would that would help the situation. But um, we got to start hitting some balls hard because we're making it a little bit too easy on them right now. Coach, appreciate it. Thanks so much Thanks for, for joining us. Thanks for being here. M-I-Z. Always great to chat. With any coach in the SEC, they're always just having a blast. But Coach Anderson and Coach Lawson keep it nice and loose, too, especially always with the media. They do, absolutely. They are such, the way that they talk, they have such a great presence about them. They have such great confidence. And when you ever ask any of them questions, they are super excited to be there for you. Some of the best parts of softball, you know, it doesn't really matter the score. Everyone's always having a blast. You look at that Mizzou dugout right now. They are rocking and rolling. You would not guess that as a team. Right now, that is hitless and trailing by two. Absolutely, but that's what you have to do. You have to keep that energy, that momentum, because if you don't, then you're going to have that lull on your team, and you're not going to be able to come back from the deficit that you're at. But, hey, let's give credit to where credit's due. The Missouri DJ right now are just playing some great music. That DJ's always keeping you on your toes here at Mizzou Softball Stadium and always doing a terrific job. It's Crenshaw, Daly, and Phillips, three, four, five, do up on paper, but it looks like we'll probably have some changes here. And we just interviewed Coach Anderson, and then she's always on her feet. She's got to run right over to the umpiring crew and inform them of uh, what she's got in store here in the bottom of the four. Absolutely, we might have gotten into her head a little bit, not being able to go, <laughs> not being able to go out and make those changes right away. But because of that, we have a little delay in the game, so I guess the announcers will take the blame for that one. What a night it's been so far for Stephanie Schoonover. I mean, this is as good as advertised. Look at her numbers entering today that were just simply sensational, and she has just gone out there and been unhittable. Unhittable is correct. She's working that top of the zone, like Coach Anderson has said, throwing that low rise ball to where it's not jumping too much, but just jumping enough to where the Missouri hitters are not being able to get good contact on it. 51 pitches, three innings, no hits, no runs. Couple of walks, one last inning, seven strikeouts. The last five outs have all been Ks, and all seven Ks have been swinging. They have been swinging, and that's a credit to just the movement that she has on these pitchers right now. She's being able to hit those corners on the outside part of the plate. She's doing such a great job of making sure that she's not missing too much over the plate, though. Quickly 0-2 here on Julia Crenshaw. He was strikeout victim number two back in that first inning. When we talked to Coach Lawson, three things really that she emphasized for scooting over this year. You talked about the weight room. You talked about the confidence. And then just the amount of spin this year that she's been able to create on everything is just making it so that she's just been untouchable. Absolutely, and spin in this game is probably the most important thing for pitchers. Yeah, you can throw 70, 71 miles an hour, but eventually these hitters are going to catch up to it, especially at this level. If you do not have that good spin on the ball to make that ball jump, to make that ball move, then hitters will just absolutely eat you up. Great shot stays alive, fouls that off. Right in that five-game hitting streak, six home runs. 
24 RBIs so far this season for Julia Kent Crenshaw. Leads the team in both those categories, but a big run producer here in the three spot. Got a piece that Koala couldn't hang up. Stays one and two. Mizzou eye in that first base hit. Instead, another punch out. Crenshaw strikes out, swinging for the second time. And it's eight now, mark it eight. That curveball on that outside part of the plate has been absolutely deadly for Mizzou today. She is putting so much spin on it, it doesn't even seem like it's going to be a strike, but she gets it on that outside part of the plate, gets these Missouri swingers swinging through it. Mentioned it last inning, and it's still true. There's only been two balls put in play by the Mizzou offense so far. Which is unheard of. This Mizzou team has been so great at making sure that they're getting walks, not swinging at balls. They've done it all year long, but for some reason, Schoonover just has an advantage over them right now. A ground out to short and a sacrifice bunt. That's it. And you get a couple of walks. Everything else has been strikeouts. And she's generated so many swings just like that one. This is just improvement that we've seen from Stephanie Schoonover from last year to this year. She has pop, she's got movement, she is getting ahead of the counts, getting ahead of these batters, and she's doing such a great job of making sure that she is making sure that these hitters are not guessing what the next pitch is, but instead she's controlling what she's throwing. Great take from Kara Daly. Daly's got five home runs, and it's time for second on the team at 13 last year. That was as a freshman, finished third on the team. Homered in five straight games last year for the first time in program history. Check swing, yes she did. Got her to chase one high and inside. First time we're really hearing the crowd today. They did not like that call. They did not, but again, like we see on the replay right here, when she goes around, if her bat even goes halfway across the zone, it is a strike. And from what we've seen right there, she did go around. Another one. Are you serious, Stephanie Schoonover? Have yourself a day so far, Stephanie Schoonover. Again, there's that curveball on the outside part of the plate, just a little bit too far out for Kara Daly to reach. Stephanie Schoonover is doing such a great job so far today. It's getting tough to keep track. She's. Got the last seven outs now via the K and a quick swing and a miss from Shantice Phillips. Shantice Phillips really put a jolt into this crowd right away in the Mizzou home opener on Wednesday. Scoreless game, two on, two out, first inning. What a time that was for her to deliver her first home run as a Mizzou Tiger ball just crushed out towards left center. That is one that she will remember for the rest of her life. Having that first collegiate career home run, finally, it is amazing to feel. You can see she just puts a charge into this ball. It was a no-doubter right off the bat. What an awesome feeling, awesome experience for Shantice Phillips. Finished today with four RBIs. No swing on the appeal. I mean, this Kentucky defense, how do you even stay on your toes? They really have had almost no action all game long. And that's a hard thing. When your pitcher is pumping gas and filling up the strike zone, not getting any type of contact at all, sometimes it can almost be a little shocking when the ball is put in place. So these Kentucky defenders need to make sure that they are on their toes, ready every single pitch, because eventually a ball is going to be put in play.
It's a solid attempt from a fan over there. Absolutely. Just went a little bit through her hands. Might have hit her in the legs. And with that cold weather today, and with that cold weather today, it is only going to make it hurt even worse. That's belted out deep towards center, but Blanton just a step shy of the track, able to track it down as Mizzou remains hitless. So far, it's been the All-Americans showing up for Kentucky. Kayla Kowalik with that RBI single with two outs in the third inning, got Kentucky on the board. And then to lead off the next frame, Eric Koppel does this out towards dead center. Their two leaders in this lineup have so far come through, gotten the clutch RBIs to, got, to get them up on the board. And then Stephanie Schoonover has gone out there and just made it look like a cakewalk. She has, and she has moving the, been moving the ball all over the zone, up, out, in, doesn't matter. These Missouri hitters have not been able to figure out what Schoonover is pitching to them. That slapped foul down the left side. Jenna Blanton at the plate. Made a nice play out there at center field. That was easily the best hit ball we've seen to end the last inning from any Mizzou Tiger as Shantice Phillips slings to it out towards dead center all the way to the track. I would even say one of the hardest hit balls outside of Aaron Koffel's that we've had today. Obviously, Aaron's got out of here super quick, but Shantice Phillips put such a good swing on that ball. It just so happened to not go quite as far as Koffel's. Cold day, there is really no wind to speak of at the moment. So nothing being wind aided that's hitting the air. But as soon as this sun goes down, you know that it's going to be even colder. More blankets are going to be brought out. You're going to be people standing up more, making sure they're not getting too cold. So not looking forward to when the sun goes down, but obviously these players are, are quite used to it right now. So at the front gate today, they were handing out beanies, nice winter hats for all the fans coming in. Perfect weather to be handing out winter hats today. Absolutely, and what better than the first SEC game series when it is mid-40s, not the best day, but hey, you get to go home with free merchandise today. One-two from Krings. Chopped on the ground right toward Frizzell, takes it herself. Krings is still doing such a great job at making sure to go in and out with these Kentucky hitters. She's only made two mistakes today, but they did so happen to come to the All-Americans. So, yes, she's got to get a little bit more precise when pitching to them, but besides that, she has really shut down the rest of this Kentucky offense. And you said, basically right at the start, one of the biggest keys this weekend was you can't let the best players at the top of the lineup on either side beat you if you're the opposing coach. You can't let the Kowalics, the Koffels get to you if you're Mizzou. And really, it's their two swings that are the difference right now. Absolutely, but it also comes on the other side too. Kentucky has done a great job at keeping Jenna Laird, Alex Hano, keeping them off the base, even getting make, making sure that Julia Crenshaw doesn't get on base too. They are the leaders for both of these teams. Just so far, the All-Americans from Kentucky have came through when their team needed it, and the other half from Missouri's lineup, they haven't quite come through yet. 1-0 pitch, a looping line right to where? Four straight retired now from Kring. She's kept all four outs on the infield. She has, and with slappers, it is so hard for them to hit that inset pitch the other way where they want it to go. And that's what we just saw right there. They got it. She got a little bit too far up in the air, and it made it too, for an easy out for Jenna Laird. And now here comes one of the toughest outs in the game. Back to the top of Kayla Kowal. One for two with an RBI single with two outs. A lot of two-out magic this week already for Kentucky. Squared to bunt, and she went around. Had a big drag bunt single that was part of their rally. They were trailing Dayton almost the entire way on Wednesday. They were, but Kayla Kowalik started that rally. She's that leader. She's the table setter. When she gets on base, the rest of the Kentucky lineup follows. And like you see from right there, she went up and she tried to bunt it. We've already seen her try and slap. We've seen her get a base hit, and now she's she's trying to get a bunt down. That is how lethal and how skilled Kayla Kowalik is. Kowalik gets into one, sends a charge out towards deep left center. Honnold slides, can't get to it. Kowalik quickly scampering all the way to third. And in there sliding with a two-out triple. 
it seemed like that ball had a little bit of tail on it. It started out straight to center field, but as it kept going, coming off a lefty's bat, it is going to tail towards left center a little bit more. And we see that right here with her inside out swing. She's going to hit it tough and square, but at the same time, it is going to tail. And that is what got Alex Honnold in trouble. 22nd triple of her career. Just climbing those program ranks in just about every statistical category offensively. Another category that Kayla Kowalik leads in Kentucky history. And Nesby slaps one that's slicing down the left field line and foul. We talked about earlier in this broadcast what part of the lineups are going to come through besides the All-American. This is a huge opportunity for Vanessa Nesby to show off that she does deserve to be in that two hole, to be in between the two All-Americans. If she can get this run across, it's going to solidify a little bit more insurance for these Kentucky, for the Kentucky defense and the pitcher. She had limited action offensively the first couple of years of her career here at Kentucky, but she was always good when she got the opportunity. The defense is always incredible. It was on SC Top 10 plays the very first game they had this year. Was almost on it again with the catch she made, leaping at the corner by the foul pulled on the left field line on Wednesday. The offense has been coming around. She goes around one and two. This is going to be a huge out for both Lauren Krings and Vanessa Nesby. This could be right here the rest of our game. Where is the momentum going to go? Is it going to get a little bit to Missouri, or is Kentucky going to be able to steal it away? Crucial pitch right here, the 1-2. Tapped up down the first baseline. Tough play for Krings. She has no play. An RBI infield single. Kowalik scores 3-0 Kentucky. That is all Vanessa Nesby needed to do. She needed to find a way on base. That is what she does as a slapper. She's not going to overpower you with strength, but she's going to overpower you with this speed. She finds a way to get that ball down the first baseline where the first baseman wasn't charging, and Krings had no play on that at all. Right into no man's land between Frizzell and Krings. Just great execution from Nesby. She picks up the RBI and it's 3 0 all of a sudden. An inning that felt like it was going nowhere. You quickly get the eight and nine hole hitters out. Two outs, there's nobody on. But you got to keep your foot on the gas if you're Lord Krings. Kowalik gets on base with the triple. Nesby singles. All of a sudden, Kentucky's added one to the lead. And they have Eric Koffel up, who homered her last time. And that's why two out hitting is so important. A little. Right there is what we see. We got Kowalik who got, who got a triple, and the next thing you know, Nesby gets on base with a little single, and they have another run. Two out hitting does not mean your inning is over. It means you got another out to work with. You don't have to be perfect, but you got to go up there and you got to find ways to keep attacking the zone, and that's what Kentucky hitters have been doing this whole game. Nesby, three steals and five tries so far this year. And that's ripped right back up the middle, another base hit. Nesby moves up station to station. She goes to second, two aboard for Riley Smith. Erin Koffel has had herself a game so far. She started out with a strikeout, but Krings brought it up to around 72 miles an hour in that first at bat. But now she's come back, she's made these adjustments. She's making sure to hit that pitch right back up the middle where she found it. And how locked in is a hitter when just about all their hits right now are coming right back up the gut? That means she's seeing this ball like a beach ball. She's going up there attacking everything that she has done. Such a good job all day today. You saw it on the home run, hit it out to deep center, and this one straight back up the middle again. Taylor Pinnell, the freshman lefty, loosening in the bullpen. We saw her down the stretch on Wednesday for Mizzou against Kansas City. Her changeup really played well on that evening. Player who Coach Anderson has talked about. You know, when you have a freshman back end of the bullpen type player, you got to put her in big games early. You can't just force her into a big game, eight conference play. It's got to come early so she can get her feet wet in those situations and not be overwhelmed when she comes in. Well, she might be asked to come into a big situation here today. And Coach Anderson has given her a ton of opportunities so far in the season. Now she just wants to see if she can contribute and do the same thing in SEC play. Riley Smith with two off. Pops it straight back. I thought we might have had a chance there. My hands were out. I was extremely ready for that ball to come straight back to me. 
we got to talk to someone and see if they can just cut that net down a little bit. We'd have a chance. I was leaning. It was coming this way. Ideally, it goes to you, though. Max, you got to call these off as You would have given it up to me. I would have taken charge on that one. Don't <laughs> worry about it. That's when we switch spots. Oh, and two. One of the better pitches today we've seen from Lauren Krings right there. Again, another huge out that Lauren Krings has to come up with. She has to find a way to keep her Missouri hitters in this game so they can at least have a chance to try and come back from this deficit. 11 RBI so far this year for Riley Smith. RBI chance here, but down in an 0-2 hole. And pulls in foul. Krings is leaving her 0-2 pitches a little bit too much over the plate right now, and Kentucky hitters aren't being extremely fooled by it. When you're up 0-2, you should be able to throw any type of pitch that you want. But so far, she's been keeping it a little bit too much on the plate with these two strikes, and the Kentucky hitters aren't fooled at all. Another 0-2 from Krings. Belted, but pulled way foul. That might have left the stadium. Oh, it would have. I remember when I used to play here, I used to hit foul balls like that all the time. They felt so good just for them to be called fouled. It was one of the worst feelings because you still had to come back and have another pitch after that. That'll be especially tough to come back and it's still 0-2 and you're facing Lauren Krinks. Crowd on to that one. But instead it's ball one. Good take from Riley Smith. Absolutely. After Lauren, a long foul ball. Lauren Krinks comes back with another changeup again. This one just a little bit too much in the zone. Umpire behind home plate has not called a strike up in the zone so far, so that is a great take by Riley Smith. Riley Smith shoots one up the middle. Great play from Lair to her left, and they get the out at first to end the inning. Three straight, two out hits. One more run for Kentucky. They lead by... Another great day for Kayla Kowalik as we look at her career accolades. I mean, if Larry David was here, he'd say that's pretty, pretty good so far for Kayla Kowalik. Absolutely. Kayla Kowalik has had such a great year, not only this year so far, but also her whole career. And right now, this year, she has had such a significant part of the past of UK catchers and the present. As you can see from her helmet right here, this is her face mask is called Decade of Dominance. It commemorates all of the all SEC catchers that UK has had in the last decade, like Brittany Cervantes, Megan Yoke, Griffin Joyner, and Jenny Schaefer, only to be able to add herself to that as well. Every starting catcher at Kentucky over Coach Lawson 16 years has been named all conference at least once. Great shots from our crew there of that mask and just how important that is for Kayla Kowalik and this program. They just year in and year out always have someone great behind the dish. Absolutely. I think that is what Coach Lawson has brought to Kentucky as well is she has those leaders behind home plate and she brings in new ones every single year. Yes, we talk about Kayla Kowalik. Yes, she's been here for five years, been that All-American. But like we talked about before, Carissa Hamilton is that catcher behind Kayla Kowalik right now who in turn will hopefully be the next great catcher of Kentucky. And how cool is that for a veteran? You know that you're representing, you know, more than just yourself in the program, but also the greats of years past every time you go out there on the dime. Absolutely. And you have to feel for those girls as well. They're done playing, but then your name gets brought up again. It's on a helmet every single day that she plays on one of the best hitters and catchers in the nation. It's such an honor to be able to see that and to be able to participate for Kayla Kowalik. They keep that going at this rate, you know, maybe a decade or two from now as Schoonover picks up another strikeout. That's double digits now for her with 10. I mean, that thing could be loaded up with stickers at a certain point, look like an Ohio State football helmet. Absolutely. I, I think that would be such a cool tradition to be able to pass down that catcher's mask to the next great catcher. If she does, if she gets that all SEC honor, that is such a cool thing to see from Kayla Kowalik this year. Sixth game this year with 10 plus Ks for Schoonover. Talk about a model of consistency. She looked the same in the first inning, the second inning, the third inning, the fourth inning, and now in inning five. Absolutely. And this is where the fatigue factor comes in for pitchers. We see it a little bit in Lauren Krings right now, leaving a couple play, couple balls over the plate, but we have not seen that from Schoonover. It almost looks like she is getting stronger as the game goes on. 
Started today with 99 Ks, took her one batter to get to 100, and she's now one away from 110. She had to pitch in that game on Wednesday, two four innings, two hits, allowed one run, it was unearned, and in four innings had seven Ks, got the win over Dayton in that comeback, late victory at home. She had one of the more impressive weekends I think we've seen from anybody in the circle all year, right in the middle of February when she had that 18K no-hitter against the top 25 North Texas team. The day before that, on Friday, she had a complete game shutout. And then the final day, Sunday that weekend, she came back and got the save. What a opening weekend for Stephanie Schoonover. And that just started the momentum for herself going for, going as the year goes on. That having a hot start gives you so much confidence in the circle. And you can still see it right now that she is in control of one, her emotions, and two, the amount of confidence that she's showing off right now. Loop down the left field line, trouble on a base hit. The first of the night for Mizzou. And can that get this team going? Peyton Jackson who had a great day on Wednesday, trying to spark a bit of a comeback. Absolutely, and we've been talking about Peyton Jackson every time that she comes up. She is a spark plug at the bottom of this lineup too, especially since she's been getting going as the season goes on. Goes on. She breaks out this no-hitter that Stephanie Schoonover has had through four and one-third inning. But is this going to be a momentum boost for Missouri? Or are they not going to be able to do anything with it? Megan Maul takes ball one upstairs. A schoon over. That's 10 plus Ks in seven of her nine starts. Megan Maul trying to maybe supplant herself. It's one of the go to options behind the plate. Good offensive day Wednesday. 0 for 1 with the K tonight. Snap throw to first. Not the time, but blocked nicely by Harrison. This is a huge opportunity for Megan Moll to act to show the coaches that she does deserve to be in the lineup. If she can get a base hit right here, keep this rally going, hopefully get Peyton Jackson into scoring position, then that's only going to show the coaches that she is here. She wants to be that catcher for the Mizzou Tigers. Great spot inside corner. That's paint from Schoonover. Peyton Jackson trying to keep those hands warm, as is Harrison at first. I think everybody in this in this stadium right now is trying to keep our hands cold, hands warmer, us included up here in the booth. Swing and a miss, strike three, make it 11 for Schoonover. Again, that curveball going to the outer half of the plate, getting a little bit off the plate. Megan Mould didn't have didn't decide fully, had that half swing it, and Schoonover got her 10th K of the day. She's had at least two Ks in every inning so far. Struck out the side in inning number three. Really been one swing against her that was completely barreled up, and that was the Shantice Phillips fly out to end the fourth inning. As Kelsey Mortimer and the junior will pinch hit here, batting 400 this year. And in the spot of Maddie Snyder here in the nine hole. And that part of the plate right now is just owned by Schoonover. Absolutely. Not only the inside, but also the outside, too. That's where she's getting a ton of her strikeouts. She's starting early in the count inside just to go with that curveball to the outside corner to finish off batters. Inside that outside, just misses the corner. Count evens it up all on a strike. And how tough is it? You're sitting on the bench for a while. You haven't seen a pitcher who's like Stephanie Schoonover, who's been just incredible today, coming out cold here on a cold day. Absolutely, but Kelsey Mortimer has been in so many pinch hitting opportunities for the Missouri Tigers, and she's absolutely excelled in them. Last year, I believe she only had three, four, five at bats, and she hit, she got a hit in every single one of them. So she is used to this opportunity to be able to show the coaches like, yeah, I want to be the first one off the bench. I want to be that go-to pinch hitter. And she has solidified that being in this position that she's in right now. And if she can just find a way on any way she can, she'd hand the baton off to Jenna Laird and the top of the lineup. But in a one-two hole. 
Throw down to second, wide of the mark. Peyton Jackson in with the headlong slide to second. Peyton Jackson read that ball in the dirt right away. And when she did, she took off. There was no hesitation whatsoever. And that kept, that caught Kayla Kowalik off guard a little bit. And because of the pitch location, she threw it a little bit wide. Good job by Aaron Koffel, though, making sure she goes and gets the ball. That was tough. The pitch took Kowalik inside towards the hitter. Tough to navigate, trying to get that throw down to second base. It looks like she's in a little bit of pain as well. Tuesday night right here on the SEC Network in the ESPN app. Our next SEC Inside grants you an all-access pass to the SEC Men's Basketball Tournament at 10 Eastern, 9 Central. You'll get never-before-seen footage and sound from players and coaches. From the behind the scenes, look, that's an SEC Inside on Tuesday night. A couple of warm-up pitches here. For Schoonover as Kowalik gives the A-OK, -OK, gives the thumbs up. Kowalik having a big day. It looked like her day could be short from the get-go. She hit that ground out to start the game, tripped over the first base bag, came up a little gingerly. You know it's going to take a lot more than that to get her out of a contest. She's gritted through it and had another tremendous performance. Two, two off the end of the bat towards shallow right. Going back on it is Tobias who makes the catch. Through five, Kentucky still with a three-run cushion. Kentucky with a run in the third, the fourth, and the fifth inning. And they have a three-run lead as we start inning number six. A couple of changes for Mizzou. Maddie Gallagher comes in. She takes over at second base. And Julia Crenshaw, who was at second, now behind the plate. Big smile on her face. Her coach speaks very highly of her versatility and her soundness defensively at second and at the catcher spot. Absolutely. And w with Coach Anderson talking about how there is no set position behind the plate right now, Julia Crenshaw started the year at second base. But Coach Anderson has been talking very highly about how athletic she is and how c she can control the game behind the plate. So she's giving her more and more opportunities to see if she can finally solidify that spot. She talked about Lang being a player who can steal some low strikes, who's generally been kind of catching the higher velo pitchers. We expected her maybe to be behind the plate today, but it was Megan Ball instead. She goes through the first five innings behind the plate, and now it's Julia Crenshaw getting a crack at it. One ball and one strike to Hallie Mitchell. Doubled her last time up, one for two. Seven hits to one. Mizzou just getting on the board in the hit column last half inning. We're going to miss the ball at two strikes. Lauren Krings finally goes, gives us that drop ball that Coach Anderson has been talking about. Absolutely drops off the table right now. To keep these Kentucky hitters off balance, I believe she needs to keep throwing it more. She needs to go out and attack these hitters both up, down, in, and out, and especially with that changeup. Outside this time. Count evens up. Crazy got the win on Sunday, the junior right hander from Loveland, Colorado. She's kept her side in it so far to this point. She knew it wasn't going to take many runs to win this game today. It's been all Kentucky offensively. So not much to speak for. On the ground. Immediately finds Gallagher, and she makes the play. And that's what happens when you come in defensively. The ball's going to find you. Absolutely. I was just about to say that. It, the ball always seems to find the player that just got either put into the game or made the air before. It doesn't matter. That is just the great part of our game. Hey, welcome to it. Welcome to the first ground ball. Better make the out. Just feels like that happens just about every time. We could have said a couple minutes and just slapped her a ground ball. Absolutely, and we can't even say anything about Crenshaw because she gets the ball every single time behind home plate. So obviously the ball is going to come to her as well too. And receiving it nicely in her first inning behind the play. Old one the count. It's a great look, Grace Lorson. Over to a K and a ground out to third. Trying to keep the deficit at three is Lauren Crinks. Went six innings on Sunday, allowed just one run. Allowed seven hits exactly that day. Went for the knees again, a bit low. 
And you see Julia Crenshaw there. She points at herself, my bad, my bad. That was a pitch that she believed she could have gotten across for a strike. She might just not have brought it up well enough, and that's what the umpire saw. She moved her hand a little bit too much. Next time, it's a little bit less movement, and she could get that across for a strike. And you got to think coming into this opening conference weekend sent that there's a chip on the shoulder a bit for this Kentucky side. We talked about they haven't beaten Mizzou since Coach Anderson took over for the Tigers. She's 6-0 against Kentucky but last year it was a three nothing sweep over the weekend in Lexington it was in their home ballpark and two of those three games were run rules it was a run rule win in game one a one run real tight thrilling game the whole way through it in game two and then another run rule in game three for Mizzou absolutely but she also attributes attributes it to the Oklahoma weekend that they had last weekend. They came out scared. They came out timid. They weren't ready to play the Oklahoma team, who is honestly a super team. They have such great players. They weren't ready to play. And because of that, they came out the second day when they played Oklahoma, and they played a lot better. They stayed within the game, stayed within themselves, did such a great job at making sure that they keep the ball in the park with those great Oklahoma hitters. They're coming back with a chip on their shoulder, and their offense is absolutely exploding today. Molly Belcher, what a kick save that was. Series history between these two sides. 23rd meeting all time. It is very tight on paper, but it has been dominated by Mizzou over the last few years, 6-0 in the last six games. That smoked out deep towards center field. Honnold back and able to track it down. Doesn't look like that knee is bothering Alex Honnold very much. He's had such a great day out there. In, out, in the outfield. She's that leader in that in the outfield for them. She makes a great play on this, drop steps right away, isn't afraid of the wall, goes up and gets the ball. Great first jump from her, and it's great to see her moving on that knee pretty well in the outfield. Got a bit of a turf monster last week, a week ago exactly today against Oklahoma State. Laura Krings has retired the last three batters. Now gets Taylor Rebs. She had back-to-back -back three up, three down innings to start today. Hasn't retired the side in order since. Can she do so here in the sixth inning? Riggs can get a strike out here, three up, three down. You're going to feel like Mizzou would have as much momentum as they've had in a while. Especially if getting that base hit in the last inning from Peyton Jackson, that gives you more confidence in your hitters more than you think. Going into the fifth inning, they were, they didn't have a single hit. But now, now that they've got one, hopefully that momentum can go to the next hitter and the next hitter, and they can start getting runs up on the board. And they're hoping that can just snowball. They've had a few good swings the last couple of innings after really not producing much in the way of quality contact the first few frames. One ball, two strikes, the pitch from Krings. And that's ripped out towards the alley in left center field. Going to split the gap, get all the way to the wall. Extra bases for Ebbs, who's in there with a two-out stand-up double. Talk about a day for Ebb. She comes in as a pitch hitter in the first inning, gets a hit. She gets another hit right now. Coach Lawson talked about she needs to get production from the bottom of the lineup. Well, Ebb seems to be coming in and making that statement for herself right now. Inside out, great swing. Gets that front foot down early and rips it to the alley. Entered today hitting a buck, 76. Last year as a freshman, she hit just shy of 300 at 298 with 10 homers and 30 RBIs. So they know what she is capable of. Certainly at the plate as Chelsea Mack will come in and pinch run. They get some good speed at second. Big insurance run out there. They sit here 4 nothing. seems like an awfully tall task with the way in which Stephanie Schoonover is pitching. Even three right now feels big. Yes, and right now if Kentucky were to get this another runner across, it's huge for them because now it makes it makes the Missouri hitters have to have another one on base. If they get bases loaded and get a grand slam, it's just a tie instead of them taking it over. So four runs compared to three runs, that's again another big deficit for the for the Missouri Tigers to come back from. Kennedy Sullivan will pinch it for Jenna Blanton in the eighth spot. 
And that's the first time we've seen Julia Crenshaw really tested behind the plate when she came up. Chested that down right in front of home plate. Nicely done. Kennedy Sullivan, Sullivan is one of those hitters that Coach Lawson talked about. Her being a dark horse, she works and works so hard. She has her ups and downs, obviously, but she's going to come in and she has this she has this unnecessary perfectionist mentality that sometimes put her in, puts her in a rut. When she's in a rut, then she's really, really down on herself. But when she is up, she has the most confidence in the world, and she can come out and be the best, be the best type of hitter that she can be. She's in year five, a former Western Kentucky transfer. She was there for three years. Year two here with the Wildcats. She's in an 0-4-11 slump at the play. What a crunch. Clutch time it will be for her to end that drop. She's hit with some of the last two and a half weeks. She hasn't gotten a whole lot of ABs of late, but her coach still with the confidence to put her up at the plate in the big spot. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Kentucky leading by three, the pitch. Strike three, looking. Krings gets it, she strands, ebbs it second, and maybe that's what Missouri needed to try to get the momentum back on the side of the home team. Here Welcome to SEC softball opening weekend on the SEC Network. On with the sixth inning here at Como, the home team limited to just one hit and trailing three nothing. They do have six outs to work with. Opening weekend continues in the SEC tomorrow. Florida versus Mercer in the AM. You get a great Auburn Georgia matchup, a top 25 matchup. Same with Florida and Louisiana. Number 12 versus number 24. A lot of good things to look forward to, including Tennessee and Old Miss. Here's a look at the rest on Saturday. Number one, Oklahoma in action against Mississippi State. Alabama and Texas, 7.30 Eastern. That's certainly one you're not going to want to miss. That is one game that I have marked on my calendar. Number nine versus number 10. Two teams going in the right direction. Alabama started off a little bit shaky. Texas has been strong and solid all the way through. It's going to be a great matchup. So down by three, six outs to work with. It feels like this is a monumental inning for Missouri trying to claw their way back because they have the top of the order in Jenna Laird up first. Absolutely, and who else would you want to start it besides your junior leader, Jenna Laird? She comes in with that 467 leadoff batting average. That is absolutely ridiculous. And to start an inning against a pitcher who has been dominating all day today, you can't ask for a better hitter up, the, up at the plate for you right now. Only three strikeouts all year. The most did come earlier today, though, against Schoonover, who's still in the circle working on her sixth inning. A walk and a strikeout for Laird so far. And three walks and a base hit on Wednesday. Reached base at four for five trips to the play. A one two. Swing and a miss, strike three. Laird Cade for the second time, make it 12 total for Schoonover. Schoonover now works that works that screwball to the outside part of the plate. It had a little bit of a run up towards it. Jenna Laird just couldn't get on plane with it. She was a little bit behind it as well. Schoonover, great pitch on the outside part of the plate. Jenna Laird has doubled her strikeout total for the year today. Entered with two. And over 70 at bats as that's cued on the ground towards Koffel. Hurries, throw on the money, but safe is the call. Alex Honnold able to leg it out. And that was close. That was very close. You see the Kentucky coaches coming out right now asking for a replay to go out and look at that bang bang play that just ended up going to Alex Honnold. 
We had a close one here on Wednesday that was overturned ultimately in this one. That looked like it might have been even closer. Absolutely. And you know that old rule, tie goes to the runner. I think it can't get any closer than that. Her foot comes down, the ball goes in the glove. I think the umpire made the right call right there. What a perfect job by Honnold to get there as quick as she possibly could. It's that front toe hitting the very front edge of the base. She got there as soon as she possibly could. But is the top of the toe down before the ball hits the mitt? That was about as tight as possible and coming at a crucial moment in this game. Remember the big review we had on Wednesday was also in the sixth inning and ultimately went the way of Kansas City, the road team that night. And the thing about video review, especially in these conferences, is you have to have indisputable evidence to turn it over. If they go back and they look at these reviews and it's nothing that they can prove, then they have to go with the call on the field. And the call on the field right now is safe for Alex Honnold. Just perfect for him. Koffel got a left on the throw. Get rid of it quickly, too. And, and this looks like one. You know, hey, we were both wrong on Wednesday, but I, I think this is another case of it looks like you'd have to just keep it as is. Absolutely, and that's exactly what Alex Honnold does. Yes, it was a very close play, but she doesn't necessarily hit the ball hard every single time. That was a little bloop shot, she, but she has the speed to beat it out at first base. Two hits now today for Missouri, and they have a one-out base runner for the heart of the order. Julia Crenshaw in the three spot. And she takes upstairs. 0 for 2 with a couple of Ks. Moved from second to behind the plate, last inning defensively. And now a huge A-B for her on a Friday night. This feels like right hit at a right spot. Six homers, leads the team in homers and RBIs this year. One swing of the bat could put the Missouri Tigers right back in this game. They would still only be down by a run, but one run compared to three is way more manageable for these Missouri Tigers. It feels like this crowd here at home has been waiting to get on their feet and screaming all night long. They finally got something good to cheer about with the hustle of Honnold able to leg out that infield single. And what a base it would do to this home environment. Instead, getting under it is Crenshaw, right side. Tobias is there. Kara Daly, the cleanup hitter, walked her first time up. She's also struck out once today. Big presence in the box as always, in a big spot. Pitch number 97 coming for Stephanie Schoonover. This Alex Honnold, the runner at first. This is a very important situation because Schoonover cannot let off the gas at all. Kara Daly has just enough, if not more, power than Julia Crenshaw. There's the two big hitters in this lineup in that three and four spot. If Schoonover leaves something over the plate, Kara Daly is going to crush it. That Honnold single and the Crenshaw pop out on the infield the first time Mizzou has had back-to-back -back players actually put the ball in play. So that's a jam shot down the left field line, foul. And it's 0-2 quickly on Daly. Pitches by inning, well, hasn't been too laborious so far here in inning number six. But you're going to throw a lot of pitches when you get the strikeout count that Stephanie Schoonover tallies. But you saw right there, she didn't have it one inning over 20 pitches. That is efficiency from Stephanie Schoonover at this game. She is pounding the zone, not throwing too many balls, and making these hitters swing at the pitches that she wants them to. Kentucky will have 9-1 and 2 due up in their half of the seventh inning. Their lead is 3 to nothing right now. They've out hit Mizzou 8 to 2 on the road in game 1 of 3. Great fight there for Kara Daly. Maybe expanded the zone a bit but able to stay alive. Absolutely, but when Stephanie Schoonover has that curveball on the outside part of the plate that she has struck Daly out on already, then she has the ability to go out a little bit further each time to see if Kara Daly is going to go after those pitches. Another one-two. And another foul ball.
Garrett Daly's been an RBI machine of late. Had eight RBIs in the last three games entering tonight. And that two homer game on Saturday at Tulsa. Five homers total on the year. Time for second most on the team. Wave and a miss, strike three. Lather, rinse, repeat. Punch out number 13 for Stephanie Schoonover. Stephanie Schoonover does it again with that curveball and the rise on the outside part of the plate. Gets Kara Daly off balance. For the game summary here in the conference opener at Columbia, top 25 matchup, one that we were looking forward to for a long time. Kentucky off the backs of a run in the third, fourth, and fifth, still with that three-run lead. And really the story has been their former All-American showing up, and in the circle, Schoonover has just been maybe even better than advertised coming in. Absolutely. She's only given up two base hits today. Both of them were not extremely hard contact. She's been able to make sure that the Mizzou lineup does the Mizzou top of the lineup does not beat her today. And because of that, they have this 3-0 lead right now. Now, what are they going to say here? Do they say that it hit Margaret Tobias? It looks like we're going to get a converging in a meeting between our three umpires. It's a pitch that went way inside from Lauren Krings, who's out there for inning number seven, her 91st pitch of the day. Home crowd, I think, wanted a foul ball there in on the hands. Tanya Cash, the home point umpire today. Big call here, first pitch of the seventh inning. And given the reaction from Margaret Tobias, I think you'd expect that that did hit her clean because she looks like she's in a decent amount of pain right now. She was over there at first base, shaking out her hand a little bit. So from what I can tell, when she squared around for that bunt, the ball just came a little bit too inside, hit that top hand, and especially in the cold weather, oof, you know that one's got to hurt. That's what I was going to ask. When it gets you, you know, your hands in between the handle of the bat and getting hit by the ball, it's well, it was 44 degrees last I looked. I don't feel like checking. It's probably not warmer than it was earlier. Absolutely, and you can see it on her face, the reaction that she had right away. She dropped the bat. It hit her right in the hand. That cold weather doesn't help with anything. Go to a few players on her bench today, but she's really been picking the right spots to do so. You go back to that Taylor Ebbs pinch hit to start the third inning in a game that did not have a hit at that point. No score, no hits. She gets a single, scores the first run. And it feels like Lawson has just been pressing the right buttons ever since. And you saw it at the beginning of the game. The pitchers, both pitchers had commands over both offenses. They just seemed like they were throwing each other off. None of the hitters seemed to make great adjustments. The next thing you know, we have a pinch hitter comes in, and she's the one that gets the first base hit of the game. That's an extremely impressive, not only on the hitter's part, but on Coach Lawson's part as well. Coach Lawson, you know, when she was talking to us, she didn't mince any words about her team's performance in Oklahoma. She seemed very disappointed in the way they came out right from the get-go. She said, hey, two hitters in, we already had made two mistakes, and it felt like from there we just felt like we were playing Oklahoma, we knew how good they were, and we kind of rolled over for them. They responded very well, and now in their first game in SEC play, they have come to fight here tonight in Como. They have, absolutely, and they've been ready. From the first pitch of the game, Lauren Kring seemed to have their number just a little bit, but from there they shared information, make sure that each one of them knew what was happening, what Lauren Krings was pitching, and because of that they've gotten these eight hits today and been able to score three runs. And how important are those early at-bats? You know, Krings goes out there, goes six up, six down, strikes out half of the first six batters she faces, but each one you see going back and talking to the person on deck, they're making adjustments, and then all of a sudden, bottom of the lineup, and then second time through, it looks like a different team. When you're at the bottom of the lineup, you have about, it could be six, seven people in front of you that can, you can get information from. And when you get that information, you almost feel like you've had six or seven at-bats just from everything that you've heard from them. So it is important for the bottom of the half lineup to make sure that they are prepared and ready when they are going up to face a pitcher like Krings. Krings who's really defended her position in the circle quite well today. Kowalik at first, one out for Vanessa Nesby. Got a clutch base hit her last time up. A two out RBI single that rolled up the first baseline that scored Kowalik from third. 
That was a big inning. It was the fifth. It was only 2-0. There were two outs, nobody on base. Kowalik, Nesby, and Koff will go back to back to back with base hits and triple and two singles. And a big insurance run that came across. Nothing's been done offensively on the scoreboard for either team since. Rings 1-0. Oh. Went in tight this time. Two balls, no strikes. Sometimes that's, that's what the game is. It is little singles, moving people around, finding ways to get runners into scoring position. Yes, we've had a home run tonight from Aaron Koppel, but besides that, it has just been little pokes here and there, trying to move runners into scoring position, and then from there, you're able to actually score those runs just from a little single that we have been talking about tonight. Runner goes, throw to second is on the money, but the tag is late. Stolen base number six this year for Kayla Kowalik. Kayla Kowalik gets a great lead off of first base. You can't leave a little bit too early or else the umpire will call you off. But she gets on time with this and makes sure to slide to the outside part of the bag, make that tag for Gallagher be even farther than it needs to be. Kayla Kowalik, a catcher in the leadoff spot who can steal bases and who can muster as many base hits as anybody in the country. Swing and a miss, strike two. Slap base hit the other way into left. Kowalik to third. Back-to-back -back base hits for Vanessa Nesby, who's two for four today. Vanessa Nesby has been that two-hole hitter that Coach Lawson has talked about that they needed. She's two for four today. She moves Kayla Kowalik to third base. So now all, all Koffel has to do is get one base hit, maybe even a sack fly. There's so many different ways that she can score her right now. Koffel, who back in the fourth inning, led off the fourth with this no doubter, just crushed out towards dead center field. That was her ninth home run of the season. She's been seeing the ball so well today. After that first strikeout that Kring's had of her, since then she has gotten all, every part of the ball and hit it right back up the middle every time like we had talked about before. It is going to be hard in a tough situation for this Missouri pitcher and defense to try and come out and get an, get an out like Aaron Koffel. You get a second team All-American at the plate in this situation who leads Kentucky in home runs, doubles, RBIs, slugging. One of the best hitters Maybe Kentucky program history, and you got a chance to add to this, Lee. And what are you saying here, your coach Anderson, this infield with Lauren Krings, who's been out there for six and a third now, about to hit pitch number 100, just trying to bear down and get through this seven. Absolutely, but she's also telling them that that run on third base cannot score. They're probably pulling out a first and third play right now. What is best? What is best for them to make sure that that run doesn't come across, but also not get another runner in scoring position for Aaron Koffel. Tough. You got stellar speed with Nesby at first too. Clutch hitter at the plate. Last time she batted. In the sixth inning on Wednesday, she had the three-run homer. Had a homer earlier today in the fourth inning. It takes one on the inside corner for strike one. And with the inexperience behind the plate with Julia Crenshaw right now, she hasn't had a lot of reps back there. So Kentucky may start taking advantage of that, maybe send a runner to second base, see what she does, see the play that they have drawn up as well. And But Julia has to make that decision to try and make sure that no one scores. Popped in the air, shallow right. Jackson coming on, makes the catch, the throw to the plate. Kowalik stays at third. Nesby does move up to second, but there's two outs and the run doesn't come home. What a play by Peyton Jackson. Not only does she cover so much ground, but she also gets the ball, gets rid of the ball so quickly. You see at the end here that she's actually going to fall over because she doesn't even have her balance after that throw, but she had to get it in quick. Kayla Kowalik has so much speed, and if she didn't, Kayla might have scored on that, but great job from Peyton Jackson making sure that one, she gets the out, and two, she also gets the ball in quickly. That's how you get all your momentum 
Hamill on the throw to the plate. And how about Julia Crenshaw moving a bit to her right? Only her second inning out there defensively behind the plate to make a nice play. And you see the athleticism of Julia Crenshaw on that play as well. Looped into shallow right. It's down for a base hit to score. And Kentucky leads by five. Riley Smith delivers. Riley Smith stepping up when the All-American didn't before her. This is what Coach Lawson wants. This is what she needs. She needs more production out of her four through nine hitters. Riley Smith, it's not the hardest hit ball, but it finds somewhere where a Missouri player isn't, and it scores two more runs to add those two extra insurance runs. And after Krings was able to get the out, and Kowalik had to stay at third. Felt like they might get out of the inning unscathed. What a clutch, timely hit from Riley Smith. And simply just more two-out magic from Kentucky this week. They have been unbelievable with two outs and two strikes even in this game as well. They're going up there still with no fear. They realize they have another out to work with. They're not putting pressure on themselves to do too much, but instead they're putting the ball in play, making the Missouri defense actually play the ball. It gets away from Crenshaw as Smith advances to third. Double digits in the hit column now after that single. Ten hits producing five runs for Kentucky. Allie Mitchell back up the middle, Krings to first, inning over. Two more runs come home on a two-out, two-run single from Riley Smith. Last chance for Mizzou here at home. It came one of the SEC Conference slate, a massive two runs in the seventh inning, pushed across by the Kentucky Wildcats, and they have a 5-0 lead. Very tall task ahead for Mizzou. Back half of the order up, and Stephanie Schoonover is back out there where she has been untouchable. She has all day. She has those 13 strikeouts just to those two base on balls. She has given up two hits, but both of them haven't been very hard. The hardest actually came off the batter who's coming up right now, Shantise Phillips. But it just, it happened that the center fielder went out and caught it. What are you thinking right now if you're Shantise Phillips, if you're the next couple hitters up here from Missouri, just trying to get on base any way you can? Shantise needs to keep the same approach that she had last time. She absolutely crushed the ball. But sometimes that's the worst part of this game is you can crush it and it can still be an out. Shantise has had some of the best at bats so far for the Missouri Tigers today. So I don't think she needs to change very much of her approach. Just keep going up there and attacking the strikes. That was smoked down the left field line, just way out in front. She got all of that. She did, antsy. and she pulled it over to their parking lot. I hope that didn't hit a car. Where are you parked? You parked that way? I sure did not. Made sure to get away <laughs> from you, this You've field. been to this ballpark a time or two. You know where to park your car. Absolutely, but when I played, I made sure to go in the back of the parking lot to make sure I didn't get hit with something like that. Jammed in the air, Kowalik over, but it lands innocuously far. I think any time the ball is near Kowalik, I just expect something sensational to happen. I, I expected her to almost be <laughs> Superman in that situation. Go out, dive, make a miraculous play. With the decades of dominance mask on, that would have been a nice moment. Oh, could you imagine that picture, too? One, two to Phillips. Able to lay off outside Kowalik, though you can see her shaking her head. That was right where she wanted it. Exactly, especially being up in the count, being able to nibble off of each corner of the plate. That's exactly what Schoonover wants to do. Get Shantise Phillips thinking a little bit more in the box. Phillips, Frizzell, and Jackson to do up on paper. Five, six, seven here for Mizzou. 2-2. Two, two. Popped in the air, straight back over our heads and out of play. Schoonover, as this will be pitch number seven of the at bat. Entered today, tied with two others for the most complete game shutouts this year with six and trying to get number seven right here. Three outs to go. Hello, 
What a tank from Shanti Phillips to work it full. Schoonover wanted that pitch so bad. You could see right after it, she had those a couple of hops. She was excited. She thought she had it. But again, our home plate umpire hasn't been calling anything all day. Only two walks today so far for Schoonover. Payoff pitch popped in the air behind home plate. Kowalik's there, but it runs out of room. I believe this to be the longest at bat of the night now. It'll hit nine pitches. Chantice Phillips has had some of the best at bats all day long coming back from that injury from a couple weeks ago. She has been on fire recently. And just because she is 0 for this game, she doesn't mean she's had bad at bats. She had a sacrifice, but she had a hard line drive that was caught, and now she's in a nine pitch at bat. She had the best swing of any Mizzou Tiger with the plate earlier today. Big hack there, fouls it away. And we'll go at least 10 pitches. She's been locked in. She had great at back just about every time up there on Wednesday. Had four RBIs, the three-run homer in the first, and putting some good swings on the ball today. Against a pitcher who's been dominating almost the whole, the whole Mizzou lineup, Chantice Phillips has just really been giving her a problem. Swing and a miss. Putt shot number 14 as Schoonover finally wins the battle against Chantice Phillips. And when you've seen that many pitches as, as Shantice Phillips did, you you chase balls out of the zone, and that's exactly what happened right there. That would have been ball four, but because Schoonover has been dominating the zone all day today, been work, really working that curveball and rise ball, she got Shantice, Shantice Phillips to swing at a ball out of the zone. Riley Frizzell up with one out and nobody on. And is it me or is it has it just looked easy for Stephanie Schoonover tonight? It has, and she has had so much energy all game long today. You see all of the fire and the passion after that last strikeout. She knows what this means for herself. She knows what this means for the team to get that first SEC win underneath her belt. What a jump she has made here from last season to this season, and she is just getting better and better as the season goes on. Not only in the season, but it seems as the game, she's 114 pitches into this game, and it still seems like she's throwing upper 60 with all, like great, great movement on her pitches in that curveball and rise ball. A 5.15 ERA last year. It was 1.62 entering today, and it's only getting better. She also now having gone six and a third. She's got a new career high already in innings pitched this season. I mean, this is the Friday night ace that Kentucky was looking for. And another one. Line them up and knock them down. 15 putt shots for Schoonover. And she's been doing what she's been doing all night. The outside part of the plate again. She brings this one up a little bit higher just for that rise ball. And Riley Fazell just cannot lay off of it. You see the passion. You see the joy again because she is so excited. She's so locked in right now. She doesn't want anyone else to be in the circle except for herself. Third game with 15 plus Ks this year. Set the program record in the middle of February with that 18 K game. Does she have one more in her? Peyton Jackson, the hitter. Kentucky trying to move to 14-5-1 to start the year in 1-0 here at conference play. Peyton Jackson is just one of those hitters that you feel has been on all night as well, too. She got that base hit, and she also has been swinging at very good pitches, hasn't been chasing out of the zone. She's really been doing well this currently in her run that she's been having. But there's no question the story tonight has been Stephanie Scuno. Absolutely. She has dominated from start to finish. She is making sure that she's hitting those pitches, and she has all night long. Her 2-1 offering. Ripped out towards center. Blanton is there. Ball game. A tour de force from Stephanie Schoonover. 15 Ks, her seventh shutout of the year. Tosses a two-hitter. What a virtuoso performance from the righty. 
Absolutely, and who else to get that offensive performance besides your two All-Americans and Kayla Kowalik and Aaron Koffel. They brought their bats today and they were able to get those 10 runs for them runner for the Kentucky Wildcats. The All-Americans come up and scoot over in the circle. Who we'll talk to next was fantastic. <laughs>